In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who renews the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the Liturgy of the Word for Friday, October 23rd, 2020, during the 29th week in Ordinary Time. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you, therefore, to lead a life worthy of the vacation or the vocation to which you were called with all humility and gentleness and with patience, support each other in love, 
take every care to preserve the unity of the spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one spirit, just as one hope is the goal of your calling by God. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel from Luke. Jesus said again to the crowds, When you see a cloud looming up in the west, you say at once that rain is coming, and so it does. And when the wind is from the south, you say it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the face of the earth and the sky. How is it you do not know how to interpret these times? Why not judge for yourselves what is upright? For example, when you are going to court with your opponent, make an effort to settle with him on the way, or he or she may drag you before the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the officer, and the officer will have you thrown into prison. I tell you, you will not get out till you have paid the very last penny. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you were ever a kid, or maybe had to discipline kids, you know that one of the best ways a child can learn a lesson is through natural consequences. If the child leaves a toy out in the rain and it's ruined, and the parent doesn't rush out to replace it, that's a punishment for the unhappy child. If the teenager breaks curfew and comes home late, then privileges may be lost and the teen may be grounded. I certainly know, speaking from experience as a child myself and then in rearing my own sons. We also know there are natural consequences in our adult lives. If we overeat or overdrink, we may get heartburn or a hangover. If we speed while driving, we may get a ticket. And in these COVID times, if we aren't cautious, we may risk our health. Today's gospel quotes Jesus reminding the people that we often can predict the future and the consequences of not doing what we know is right. Jesus says, when you see a cloud looming up in the west, you say at once that rain is coming and so it does. And when the wind is from the south, you say it's going to be hot and it is. Now, whereas Jesus' stories sometimes harken back to a simpler time, these examples are very real to us today. For example, if rain is imminent, we of course know we need to grab an umbrella or reschedule that walk outdoors or picnic. Jesus says we're smart enough to know the right course of action. So we can see the signs, but sometimes we're not attentive to what the consequences of ignoring them may be. So Jesus goes on to call us hypocrites. He says, you know how to interpret the face of the earth and the sky. How is it you don't know how to interpret these times? Why don't you judge for yourselves what you know is upright? In other words, Jesus is reminding us that sometimes we either ignore or pretend to ourselves the consequences won't be that bad. <laughs> Yet we know right from wrong. And we know the consequence of our action or our inaction that is, our sin, results in harming our relationship with our loving God. That's the ultimate consequence. We can't hide. We can't ignore the rain resulting from our sin. We can't hide from the everlasting price that we may pay for breaking our bond with God. And that's also true in our relationships with others. Jesus gives the example of having a dispute with someone. He notes that instead of waiting to get to the judge, metaphorically, if that's our creator in the judgment day in heaven, we should work to make things right before the consequences of our actions take us to that point. It's Jesus' warning that 
We need to look realistically at our lives and our actions. And if we have done someone wrong, we need to work with them for forgiveness and healing. We know when we've done wrong, and we know we need to work to make things right again before it's too late. So today's gospel urges us to look at the signs in our lives. What are we doing or not doing that we know is wrong? Are there storm clouds in our relationships with others? Maybe the steps we need to take are small, like making that outreach phone call to someone we know who's hurting and could use support. Or maybe we need to do something bigger, such as connecting with an estranged relative to bring the start of mutual healing. Maybe we need to contribute to charity, to do our part to help those who are less fortunate in our community and our world. Maybe we need to take advantage of the Sacrament of Reconciliation here at St. Joe's, Tuesdays at 5, Thursdays at 8.30, or by appointment. You may have sung Father Michael Jonkus's beautiful song that he wrote early in the pandemic called, Oh Shelter Me. I think it reinforces today's gospel message. Because we know that when there are storms, even those of our own making, that God will protect us if we ask. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me, the way ahead is dark and difficult to see. In our prayers of petition, we bring our various needs to God. For our St. Joseph Parish community, our Archdiocese, and all the faithful, that they may say, stay strong in faith, we pray to the Lord. For our cities, our state, and our country, that we will find guidance in these challenging times, and we may find the means to heal our divisions and come together, we pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering from the coronavirus and the economic impacts, or who may live in fear, that they may be comforted, we pray to the Lord. For the individual intentions of all who may be burdened by any kind of difficulty, that we all may remember God's unending love for us, For those in our parish and our extended families who are ill, that they may find strength in their faith. And for our deceased dear ones in our families and parish family, may they rest in God's loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.